I'd like to address the topic of trills and also um, the pinky finger at the same time. So um, if you are having a little bit of trouble with trilling and you feel like your fingers will not go very fast or they're very um, uncontrollable, like they'll go too fast and then too slow, or um, if they just uh, feel stuck, you know, all the time, and um, or if they feel weak at all, especially pinky finger, uh, most people avoid trilling with the pinky. So I have a very easy and um, simple exercise that I usually do with all of my students if they need a little bit of finger training. So uh, generally you want to um, practice the uh, the finger lifting and dropping. Usually the trouble is the lifting. Uh, I usually find that if a student is having trouble with trills, they're either clamping down too hard, like their thumb is too tight, or the finger is just uh, pressing too hard or squeezing too long, and uh, the student is focused more on the dropping than the lifting. But of course the lift has to be just as nice as the drop and they need to be all well defined. So um, this does not cover, you know, everything about trills. So generally we want to um, just, you know, work on the, the finger um, action a little bit. So uh, this is what I, uh, the first thing I usually do with my student when we need to work on the finger action of a trill. So you can take any finger you like as a you know, warm up or as a starter. And what we'll do is we'll just practice the trill in rhythm. So um, usually it's easier to do the um, lower note longer, right? And then the upper note quicker. Now if you have a hard time reaching a whole step, you could practice the half step. So start on C sharp. Because that takes us to another topic of intonation during trilling because the intonation does change slightly. Um, so you just want to listen to, especially whole steps are difficult to tune uh, because they typically sound like they're flat. The, you know, the rapid note that the note above sounds a bit flat if you're not careful. So just want to listen to it. We could talk about that in another video. But um, so definitely, you definitely want to just Tap it as quick as you can. It's just like a throwing motion and then like a rebound. And um, so you should do that for, you know, a good while. Um, don't overdo it, but definitely need to give it a little bit of time. And when you're pretty pleased with that, then you want to do the opposite. So. You're going to do hold the upper note and lift it very quickly. And my bow just goes, if it runs out, I just turn it around and keep it going. Okay, now this one is usually kind of harder. And what I usually talk about is like if you had a cup on the table and there were a fly trapped under it, uh, just imagine you'd have to lift the cup very quickly for some reason, whatever reason, but you cannot let the fly escape. So that's the action that we want. So it's on the string and then really let go and put it right back on. So that's a really good exercise. And then you try trilling and you'll find that um, all of a sudden very quickly it's much freer and much easier to trill. Now this works very well with uh, pinky finger. So I would definitely do the same thing. Let's try on the D string. Okay, let's try the, this is a whole step, but let's just do it anyway. I don't know if you can tell, but there's this thing that we violinists call a ping. All right, so when my pinky drops, you can hear there's a little, like a knock, like kind of like a thud, like if you were to knock on the wood or something like that, right? So there's this thud sound. You want to 
throw it and then you want to release the tension as soon as you're done. Now we'll do the opposite way. So we'll start with the A. This one's hard. Sometimes when the pinky is going, the thumb back there is tight. So it, they might seem like they're totally on opposite sides of the hands, but somehow they're um, interrelated. So in, when you're working on pinky and the pinky is struggling a little bit or feeling weak, you always want to check the thumb and see if that side of the hand is okay. So um, those are some basic, really, you know, great exercises for that. And I just wanted to also point out that trilling exercises are wonderful for intonation because think about it let's say you know there's a note that you consistently play out of tune and you're playing your piece let's say you're playing like a Bach dance or something like that one movement from a Bach and you keep on playing that note out of tune but let's say you know when you play that passage you're gonna come across that note maybe 12 times or something right but um, so you're only giving that finger 12 opportunities to, you know, try to work on itself, right? To improve itself. Um, in, but you have to play the whole passage to do so. Instead, you can play the note that precedes it, right? In the passage and then play that note and then make a trill study out of it. So you can kind of trill um, using that. So that's wonderful. Um, I know there are many 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 kreutzer etudes um, if you look towards like the middle on the back uh, from the mid to the near to the end there are several of them they're all throughout but there's like a you know a patch of them there and a lot of them incorporate pinky um, trills and so those are wonderful it's just trill after trill after trill and anything noodly like you know this um <laughs> That sort of thing, even in trod and a lot of things, those are basically in the trill category itself. So those are all great for intonation. And every time you lift and drop, your muscle is remembering exactly how to do that action. You know, how much height, how much, how much, um, uh, you know, like how is your finger moving? You know, is it hinging from this knuckle or is it hinging from this knuckle or this knuckle? Uh, what shape is it in? You know, so there are a lot of questions and that you can ask yourself and see um, you know what is your finger actually doing and then you get to listen to it right and then when you're trilling you can do it over and over and over and over i believe i watched a documentary or something where um, i heard that high fits does a lot of uh, trill did a lot of trills in his personal practice and he had a very rigorous warm-up routine um, from the various sources that I've heard. I hope they're correct, but I would believe it. I, I would believe it because I, I see it in his technique. Um, so yeah, I know he uh, incorporated a lot of trills and I think really that's like a great opportunity to give that finger that same motion, that same action, like many, many, many times, like 50 times, 100 times in a row if you so chose to, instead of just playing that part of your piece over and over again. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope this helps with your trills. Um, it, this works on everybody. I do it with all my students and it always improve their trills, but you have to make sure that you're very, uh, you know, rigorous with your rhythm. So be sure to do whichever way you're going, whether you're doing long, short or short, long, that you keep it very snappy. And when you're, and did you see how much time I had in between one, I call them noodles. So between one noodle, I had a, plenty of time because if you're just doing it over and over and over again, you can't really concentrate on the technique and the, the, the surge of, you know, um, activity, right? And then the relaxation afterwards, you have to be quick about it, use your energy and then release, use your energy and release. That's really, really important. And then kind of look at, you know, the shape of your finger or what it's doing. So anyway, I hope that helps. So that's your uh, pinky strengthening and um, trill uh, tip for the day. Okay, have a great day.